All right, so in this one, we are gonna add a custom validation to our email field. Um, we already have validations built into it. Django has already done a lot of the heavy lifting there, right? So to check those validations in the admin, if I just said uh, ABC123 as the email and hit save and continue, it's gonna say enter a valid email address. That is a form of validation, right? It's validating the data before it ever saves on our database. It doesn't actually touch our database until it validates. Um, and we'll see what that does or how to do that later, but that's an important concept with forms. It's like, you know, you start off with some data and you wanna make sure that data fits some criteria before it even goes into the database. This has a lot to do with not only just getting great data, but it also makes sure that security is there as well. Because uh, there are ways to get around certain things um, when it comes to security, like putting some sort of JavaScript or something in here that's malicious. These forms actually clean that stuff up for us. Um, so now what we can do is inside of our model form, we can make Python functions in here to actually make sure that this data is working. These functions, also known as methods, are going to help us flush out any data that we might not want. So the way it works is we'll do clean underscore the field name. So whatever the field name is here, clean underscore that will actually be a function that we're overriding for that field. So for us, clean email is how we're gonna actually do that. So clean email means that we're gonna be checking, we're overriding the function for cleaning the email data. So in here we'll pass in self. So as you may know in Python, the way classes work, is they have instances. So self would be the instance of that form. So like, to, for example, this right here is an instance of the form. So self being that one particular instance. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but basically every time you send to save something, it's an instance of that field. Um, so yeah, all right. So now that we've got clean email, we're gonna go ahead and print out some clean data. So we'll print out self.cleaned data. Well, that's what we'll, we'll print that out first. And you'll see what that does in just a second. And I'm gonna return abc at gmail.com. That's actually what I'm gonna return at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and go back into our email. Notice it's abc123. I'm gonna hit save and continue. And it's still validating that email address. So I'll say abc at 123abc.com hit save and continue. Notice it changed the email, right? So I actually just returned a different email address. Um, and then also if we look in here, we printed out the clean data. The clean data is a dictionary in here that's showing us the different data that's actually coming through. Um, so that's what's actually coming through on the form itself. Now there's a way to override the clean data itself, but we're not gonna get into that. We're just working on the one field that we're making a validator for. Um, so now that we can actually grab the email and we can see how we can grab the email by using clean data we can use self.cleandata.get and then email because it's the email um, parameter here so if we look into we've got the email key there all right so the value for that is what we want to print out so let's go ahead and do that again we're going to just save this so save and continue and it prints out that email so it's printing out abc at gmail. So if we change this to something else, um, maybe not one, two at the end, but at the beginning, and we change it to something else, we save that. Notice it's still saving as abc, but the one that's printed out is a little different. So that means that email is equal to that. And basically what we would do is just return the email. So now in between this action, we can actually do some stuff for validating the, the email itself or the form itself. So let's go back in here and we'll change this to ABC123. Um, and then we will save it. And of course, it's gonna stay as the correct actual email address that we enter in. So if we save and continue, notice it saves it, perfect. That's because we are running a override for cleaning it. So notice this self.cleanData what this means is it's gonna actually run through cleaning it in the first place. So it's gonna run through all of the validators it needs. And then we're just adding an additional one because what we tried to do before, or what you can still try to do is save it as a non email address and it'll say, you know, enter a valid email address. But from here, what we wanna do is let's say for instance, we wanna to check to make sure a .edu is in the email. 
So if not dot edu in email. So if not dot edu is an email, or we could just do if not edu is an email, then we can return or excuse me raise a forms dot validation error and put a message inside of this validation error, and we'll say please use a valid college email address, or maybe better yet dot edu email address. Okay, so we'll save that. And now I'll try and do abc123 at gmail. Go ahead and hit save and continue. And now it's saying, please use a valid.edu address. So now I'll just do a gmail.edu, although that's obviously not a real one. But now if I save it like that, it now changes it and allows me to do this validation. So all sorts of things that we can do in here um, using standard Python functions or coming through here. Of course, one thing that you would really want to do is actually separate this email out to get what the extension actually is. So what I mean by that is we would say email, um, email base, um, and then we'll say uh, the extension or the um, provider, and then we'll do email.split, and then using at. So this is separating the base or the username and then the provider, so it'd be like gmail.edu, and then provider, then we'll say um, domain and extension equals to provider dot split. And then we use the dot. And now we'll say if extension, if not extension equals to edu, if not extension equals to edu, then we can run that again. So this is actually a more accurate one. So extension, of course, being that last dot, because if we had edu here, that last one would have worked. So now if I do this again, it still works. But now if I do edu.com, it should run that validation. And now it's saying, you know, please use a valid edu address, which is perfect, which that is how you would do like a school related clean email address. Very simple, very easy to do. Um, and it's also something you could do for Gmail. You could do all sorts of things here as far as validating this email and you could have other validators if you wanted as well um, so like if you said if here's another one if not domain equaling to um, let's say uh, USC so University of Southern California where I went and we say raise forms dot validation error and you'll say um, please make sure you use your USC email all right, so let's try that again. So now I'll just say dot gmail dot edu and we'll hit save and continue. And now it's giving us this other validation. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this. And of course, it doesn't only work on email. So if you wanted to do full name, you did do def clean full name of self. And that's going to run through something very similar. You'd want to grab the full name equals to self dot clean data dot get and full name. And then in this case, I'll just return full name because I don't actually need to run through this, but this is running. This is actually running already, but now you could do stuff here um, and you could write validation code right there. And that's fairly easy, fairly simple. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.